lagi Cukulah kalau dapat ke teori ini Burung kaya kapak pundi dulu kumba Syukuluk kumba lagi Cukup juga aku Let's start 4, 3, 2, 1 Papa can you hear me? Papa, do you know me? That's not how it goes. What? I don't like when you disrespect my favorite movie of all time. All Yentl. Right. From Yentl, the top. Yentl, from Yentl, the top. Yentl, Yentl. I love lentils, though. Look, do you want to know one Is, part of the song? Yeah. Looking at the sky, I seem to see a million eyes. Which ones are yours? Uh-huh. It's one of the best. It's, it's the best there, movie. It's up there with Cats. Okay. I saw Cats. Oh, I got to talk about Cats. But let me, let's, start with the, let's start with the pod. Okay. okay. You hurt my feelings. That's 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 the song I sing when I think about my pappy. <laughs> already, I honestly, like when I watch Yentl, you've been on my case for three weeks already. You're doing it. See, this is this is his. Let's just start. Can okay, I start, start the let's fucking start. podcast? Okay, start. I thought God. you guys would be all lovey dovey from like being around each other. We are so lovey dovey. Flatty. Okay. Well, we'll talk about our um, quarantine experience in a second. This ungrateful little fuck. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Go ahead, start Enough. the podcast. All right. Sing from the top again. Countdown. Papa, can you hear me? Papa, don't you know me? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of uh, Tiger Belly. Um, we're in quarantine here in Calacala. We've got um, the same old uh, um, characters. We have regulars. We have Gilbert. Good to see you, man. Love you, Papa. Love you, Mama. Yeah, We've yeah, got yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mama. Do you love me? Mama, do you do do? We've got George. We've got my beautiful um, partner in life, Kalila. Maid. Kalila. Maid. 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 <laughs> you're a fucking maid. Parent. Man. Jesus. You're a nurse. Warden. You're a maid. You're, you're a gardener. Bitch boy. You're a bitch boy. Oh God. Bitch boy. Gopher. Right, uh, okay. We've Gopher got, girl. And we've got on camera over here. You can't say anything. But we have a snotty teenage, oh, oh no, a snotty teenage ungrateful teenager in the house who cleans up after Bobby it all day. It doesn't matter. She gave me shit about the stove the Cooks other day. Cooks and cleans and does laundry. What did she say? Juliana. Okay. <laughs> We've got Bryce. Whatever. Show your face. Well, Show your hey, face. Everybody, listen. This is. Um, I have to be honest. I have not been feeling funny. I'm lost. You know, we're all lost. We're all. Uh, we have no idea what day it is. We have no idea what the fuck is going on. Kalila is acting like it's Chernobyl out there. Um, she's acting like um, Poland 1939. I said that before. Um, don't go outside. Don't mm. look at anybody. They're going to find you. You know, that type of vibe. Um, but you know what? I'll be honest with you. I honestly think that if I didn't have Kalila as a girlfriend, if I... I think I would have it by now, for sure. Okay. I think I'd be sick. I could have died. Oh, so wow. I want to thank Kalila for keeping my me alive, even though um, at times it's hard. You know, I want I want Lou Malanadis. What's it called? L- Lou Malanadis from Chicago. Lou Malanadis pizza every day, but I can only have it every other day. <laughs> I, if I could show you guys the amount my armpits and hands are sweating just listening to him say all this right now and the yeah. rage that's steaming out of my ears. I could see it. She could see it. Let me let me put it to you this way. Think about it. Go. Just Here we paint, go. Paint, paint this picture in your mind. All right. He comes back from Colorado and the okay. first thing he says is now he wants to panic buy everything. Meanwhile, since January, since I've been keeping track of corona and having no trust in our government, I've slowly been taking non-panic measures, making Mm. sure that I have a can of beans each week, you know, (laughs) stockpiling very slowly. Mm -hmm. Because there was a part of me, my sister and I had been talking for a long time about this. There was a part of me that knew that at some point, shit shit might get weird. So by the time he comes back from Colorado... He's already in a full panic. To his luck, however, the pantry is nicely stocked. Mm. There's a warm dinner on the table. We have toilet paper. We have viricide. We have germicide. We have everything you could possibly need to live a very comfortable, lush life at home. 
16 hours of the day, he goes into a storage room, plays his video games. I keep to myself. Love I it. watch my Korean dramas. I cook. I clean. I do his laundry. I am just, I, I basically, there is nothing that he does except for v play video games and smoke cigarettes and then call his friends about how terrible I am of a partner. I didn't say that. Hold on, listen. I'm, I'm, I didn't fucking say that. That's all he does. It's, it's as if like he has, it's it's like, you know, like the the stereotype, and it is a stereotype. You're rubbing Only your coochie. You're rubbing your coochie to Korean dramas no, every listen. day. Whoa. You know the stereotype about like older Jewish moms who just it's it's in them to need to like complain even if like nothing is happening or nothing is wrong. You're not rubbing Bobby your coochie. Bobby is an old Jewish mom. If if the world if the sky is blue if there's food on the table if he has clean underwear and all he has to do is lay on his back, and be fat. He would still find a way to trash talk me and say that I'm not doing enough and have like three meltdowns a day. It's just he cannot. Help I had himself. one meltdown. I had was, one fucking meltdown yesterday. Uh, about and what? I apologized for it. What happened? Did I not apologize? I got on my hands and knees and I said, I'm sorry. But that's after I, I um, threatened to not feed you. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like when Pol Pot or, you know, some of these guys, they did what they did, right? They don't feel guilt. They don't apologize. But I immediately realized the errors of my wrongs. Mm. You're and I got on my Pol hands Pot. and knees and I fucking apologized. I'll tell you what happened. Mm. Is, is that, um, the thing is, is that, well, let me say what I want to say. You can say what Your you case. Go ahead, sir. Okay? Because, um, yes, I, I thank you for, thank you so much for, um, for providing the things that you know that we need to survive, right? Mm -hmm. But Papa needs other things as well. And Papa Such has as? received K Minamoto, Luminati's, oh, uh, fifty yeah. cans of Diet Coke, um, but the diet, but Portos, bakeable treats. Anything you, you have ever you desired, I have gotten you. I know, but it didn't. I know, but you have to say this is my first. Ep <laughs> this is my first pandemic. I've never been. <laughs> It is. I've never been in one before. You got to ease them in. You got to right, ease them so in. Right, so I don't know what the fuck. So the next pandemic, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be very well prepared. I see. All right, I'll have mm -hmm. all the Diet Cokes that I need. I'll have all the Luma Lanai's pizza I need. I'll have all the Portos and all the things prepared. I'll get a different, I'll get another freezer. Because right now we don't have a lot of freezer space. But, yeah. you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have all the things ready the next pandemic. All right. If it, there's an alien invasion, I probably won't do it right at first because I've never been through an alien invasion. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is, yeah. is that we we as people, we you know, some people like me, I'm just a I'm a, I'm a working class guy. Blue collar. I, I, I'm not educated. Yeah. You guys know this. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know what I'm saying half the time and I, I don't know things. So I'm learning slowly. I'll tell you this, though. OK. That I did apologize. I did have a meltdown because Kalila, you know, orders things online and they come the next day. I've ordered 40 things online. None of it's here. <laughs> and I've ordered them months ago. I ordered these. I go on Instagram. I ordered these bamboo pants. These oh, nice. pants I don't know who the bamboo <laughs> Wait, pants are. Why do you need that for a pandemic? I, I need comfort for my legs. So he has okay. to... Um, See? He so I mm -hmm. told him it's like you cannot be buying, you know, all of these products from unverified sites I from just China. Figured, no, I just figured if they're from Instagram, so every I go on Instagram and they go, <laughs> Wait, you know, the little the salmon, you know, the salmon cat toy where the salmon moves around yeah, when yeah, you put yeah. that battery in there. I ordered that a month and a half ago, and then I looked at arrive, and it says it's been delivered and here, right? So I'm the, I like, and so then. Um, I've been ordering the bamboo pans. I also ordered um, these cat um, for the window. Where they, they, they're like little hammocks. I saw that Ooh. on Instagram. I okay. bought that. I bought a bunch of stuff. And um, every day you go out there and you have, she orders the toilet paper. And I the, don't order toilet paper. Or, I mean, whatever the, that's coming. You no, know I, mean? I haven't. I haven't bought a single piece of toilet I paper. I mean, wh whatever is out there, like um, whatever. The, thing, um, the boxes out there. Things that what, keep what, you what, here. Where are the boxes, yeah. Kyla? Everything that's in a box is never for me or Juliana. It is all for Bobby Lee. Everything oh. that it's like to keep him 
at an even keel. Like for me to survive all of this, I just need to keep buying what he wants. Like I'm very low maintenance. I eat rice and egg. I eat leftovers, no problem. He doesn't have. He doesn't do leftovers. He needs to have. He's Juliana and I have called him. He, we, he is like the picky princess. He needs to have his like luxuries, or else he is a dead man. Like mm. psychologically, he's a dead man. He emotionally cannot handle living a simple life. Okay, I'm fruity and I'm fancy. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that I'm like that. And I, I meditate at night. And I go, why are you like that? But I, I you know, I just, I, I, I think I've been spoiled. I'm a spoiled little bitch. He lives a life of indulgence, and it couldn't be more apparent than than yes, now yes, when we've yes. had to hunker down. It's like he, it, it's not enough to have like three square meals. He has to have, you know, fancy thirty dollar mochi balls. Where do like, you? That's what? what? Yeah, we order mochi balls. Very expensive. Stuff. So I had to go and order from K Minamoto. <laughs> $30 mochi balls? Fuck you, man. I'm going to tell you this, all right? Send me one. Send me if, one. I will send you, but fuck I you, see man. I'll tell you this right now. All right? Yeah. This is, uh, uh, like I said, my first pandy. Yeah. This is his first pandy. That's It's true. my first pandy, right? <laughs> I've never had been through a pandy before. I'm sure a lot of people are on board. You, you got people listening. You probably have not mm -hmm. been in a pandy before. But this is, you know, it's number one, it's crazy. Number two, mm -hmm. I... I, I, Kalala saw it coming a mile away, you know, and I was making fun of the disease maybe two months ago. I was saying stuff like, uh, remember the whole grain of, grain of sand analogy that I did? In China, In yeah. Chi yeah, it's like, so, you know, <laughs> Kalila was right. And uh, have I done this though? Have I left the house really? The only times I've left the house. Well, he I've knows that if he leaves the house, he's going to have to live downstairs by himself for two weeks in yeah. another quarantine uh, within a quarantine. Yeah. So the only two <laughs> times I've left the house is to see that redheaded freak, Andrew Santino, to do Bad Friends. And the only people that are in the room is that white guy, George, me, and Andrew, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't stopped by. The only times I've stopped by, I've had to get cigarettes twice at 7-Eleven, which Kalila and her ungrateful... Her ungrateful little niece. Here. What has Juliana, Juliana done? <clears throat> Juliana, Juliana does, she does everything. Has, she does everything. She honestly, Gilbert put it this way. <laughs> yeah. If she wasn't here, I would have Bobby and I would have already killed each other. You, oh yeah. Because she, she she's oh. my little helper. She helps me cook. She helps me clean. She helps she's me great. do laundry. You know, and Bobby has this thing like if I could, if he had a a, a name or like a phrase to define who Bobby Lee was, it's little trashes everywhere. You know that mm. book, Little Fires Everywhere? <laughs> yeah. By Celeste? <laughs> Little trashes everywhere. I don't understand. Everywhere around the house, it's like pennies smushed together by a piece of gum. <laughs> like stuck together, like in a clump with gum in it. Yeah. <laughs> Like little pieces. It's not even like I big call them trash. Penny wallets. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I don't understand where they come from. Like, for instance, if he like tears open a bag of chips, you know, the tip. The, the little tip mm -hmm. that's torn off, there's like 50 of them everywhere. Mm -hmm. No matter where you turn, there's little trashes everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I've been trying to be mindful about that as well. So it's like, <laughs> I have. Last night, okay, when I opened the little, for the dogs, the little packets of food, put it in the thing. So I try to be mindful about it, all right? But okay. then again, you know, we're all under a little duress. Mm. You know, this is not norm. Mm -hmm. this, all, is... this is not normal. But this is not duress. It's a it's the country's in duress. You can feel the energy of the country, and I'm and yeah, I, and I absorb I absorb energy. I know, but I'm what I'm saying of is energy. the that frontliners sense, yeah. and all those people. That's duress. The people who have to suit up, intubate, get exposed to aerosolized viruses on a daily basis. I, I understand that's that. But what we're doing, this is baby shit. I understand that. Like also, you know, back back in the day, you know, we would when we went, when we went into Iraq, those. Soldiers were under way more duress than I could possibly ever conceive. Mm -hmm. But being a little bitch baby, the way I am, yeah. right? This is this causes me duress. I'm sorry. You have to consider our pockets are full, our bellies are and, full. And, and, and we have a Tempur-Pedic bed. We have a I know, home I, 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 with a nice yard. I'm it's, grateful. This is this couldn't be a more lush <laughs> staycation. It's a lush, it's lush. 
<laughs> it's so lush. I just want to put it out there oh, that fuck. I am so thankful for the life that we have, and I do consider us complete, totally privileged, and we are not in the position to complain about. I'm not complaining. A damn I'm thing. I'm accepting the situation. We this is this has to be done. All right. When I go online, I see people going on the beaches in Florida or that pastor yesterday in Tampa having church service. Mm. It drives me crazy. I understand this, that this needs to be done. We, we all have to do our part and stay in the fucking house until this is over with yeah. or it's never going to end. So I, I know that and I know that it's serious. All right. I know that Danny, Danny Day, Day Kim got it and he said mm. that it was terrible. Right. Michael Yo just had it. Oh yeah, you know, and he doesn't look as handsome. <laughs> he doesn't look as handsome. That's a handsome he, guy. He's though. a little bulby and bloated, <laughs> you know. So I know that. You gonna shit on a sick person? You no, know, I love him. <laughs> and I'm glad he's safe. He's not dead. Hey, you he's know, he's still dead. Be fine. And so um, I know, you know, for me, here's another thing that's a little difficult, and I'm not complaining, but you have to understand that, and we all. It's all interfered. It's interfered with everyone's lives. You know, I'm just just my own little personal thing is is that, you know, I've never gone this long without doing stand up. I've you know, mm. so it's you know, and stand up was always you know, uh, a, it it feels like you're on drugs. It's an addictive hobby that I have, mm. mm-hmm. and so you know, I'm detoxing off of that as well. You know, I miss seeing other comics. You know, um, what's great about it's not great, but you know what's different about the pandy is is that um, I'm getting texts from people that no, normally don't text me. Bill Burr texted me out of the blue the other day. Mark Maron texted me yesterday. How you doing? Which is wow. what? Hmm. What the fuck? So I'm like, I'm fine, sir. Thank you for the reach out. <laughs> so you're getting a lot of people reaching out. Um, I think it's humanized a lot of people. I, I think it's in in a weird way have united us you know i i really do care about people and we're i do i i'm not saying anything i know but you're you're you know i'm giving you side eye you're giving me side eye a little bit is it, but, is um, it because of the asians that are getting beat kalila man i have another <laughs> bone to pick about that it's i i think that what's happening to asians is so fucking ignorant but but especially, Bobby, especially you know here's the thing all right here's take the thing. on it all right. But wait, can we but can we promise one thing after five more minutes of this? I think that everyone right now is so like just kind of overwhelmed with too much like no, we're, corona we're, we're, content. We're, 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 but after we'll this, can it. we like? I have a lot of things I want to talk. I have things that I want to talk to you about. Let's go light and airy after this. Let's go light back to our silly. We will. Selves. We will. But let, we, this is the first one we've done. You know, yeah. under the pandy, and let, I think we should. I think it. We should talk about it a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. But the thing is, is that, you know, what Americans have to understand is, is that, you know, Asian dudes that live here, that are born here, right? Because yeah, I saw some video at a Walmart somewhere in the Midwest where some Asian American guy coughed and people confronted him. It's like, dude, it's like, hey, let me say, I'm 48 years old, all right? And if you're 46, I've been in American longer than you, all right? How old are you, George? 40. Right. So I've been an <gasps> American longer than you, you for eight loud. years. All right. I'm Ameri- an American through and through. I bleed and poo red, white, and blue. <laughs> I love this country so much. This is all I know. I don't know shit about Asia. Right. Yeah. So when, you know, I haven't, obviously, I haven't been outside and I haven't been. Being, I haven't been confronted by, you know. I have a question about the red, white, and blue. But, but I just, but Why does <laughs> America think they own those colors? Because the Philippines has red, white, and blue, and just about maybe a hundred to thirty other countries. Why do we own that? What, we don't own it. But why do those Americans say red, white, and blue? Like the, that, that's only supposed to be like the the um, what do you call it? descriptor? Descriptor. French I guess flag. You like, I think it's every. I, sh- it's I shit out popular. fifty stars. You can say that. <laughs> fifty stars. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Maybe that's that, it. That that's more American. Fifty. I think because we got stars. the uh, we have the country stars. songs 50. that sing red, white, and blue. So I think that's how we want it. Is uh, through a lot of country songs, and nobody else wants country songs about their uh, the colors of their flag. So they'll go other things. Oh, okay, okay. But I just want to make a point. Though. Can I just go back to... Yeah. You're, you're an American. Not only am I an American, it's it's like, you know, what happened? I don't know what happened in Wuhan. I don't know how this fucking started. 
I don't want to make, you know, I I'm wasn't there. I love the way you said it, like a country star, Wuhan. Wuhan. I don't know nothing <laughs> about it. Wuhan. You know, I don't know nothing about Wuhan. <laughs> but um, you, you don't think that I, you don't think I, being an Asian American guy, go, what the fuck happened? You know, like I am angry about it as well, right? I'm in the same boat as any other American about this disease. I have no idea how it started. I'm sure... You know what I mean? There were there were a lot of things that went wrong, right? To contain it, I think that China could have done different steps to um, to be more transparent about the disease up front. But my point is, is that when you're har- if you harass some random Asian American dude about this disease, we're as confused as you are. We're the same as you, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt, but we have this amazing sponsor we want to share with you. Hims, 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 if you're a guy, you need to do it. Oh. Hims, 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 get your shit together, guys. Mm. Listen, guys, um, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Um, hims is a is a product that um, if I was a young man, I wish I had this in my 20s. Um, you know, w- there's a lot of issues surrounding men. Um, men, they, they start losing their erection. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's not funny. Yeah, that's not funny. Why'd you laugh at that? Um, they start <laughs> losing their hair, and there's and you know, back in the day, you would have to have some form of connections or money to get these problems resolved. But now it's easy. It's at the tip of your fingers and your dick. Yeah. Well known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you combat ED. Prescription solutions backed by science and made more affordable. Guys, see results where other treatments fall short. Tell them more, Gilly. Try Hims today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to forhims.com slash tigerbelly. That's F O R A I H M S dot com slash tigerbelly. Forhims.com slash tigerbelly. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to a person uh, in the doctor's office or pharmacy. Remember, forhims.com slash tigerbelly. Enjoy the rest of this show. But here's the good news. And this is a proof. I've been working out. Every Ooh, day I'm, and I'm, lifting. I've been lifting. And Peloton for 40 to 50 minutes a day. 50, 40, 50 minutes a day. Damn. I've been lifting weights. Hmm. And people go, why, Bob? At your age, right? Why Do you want to be in a Marvel movie? No. <laughs> the reason why I'm doing it, I've, I, I've thought about it. The reason why I'm doing people it. Ask people ask you that? Yeah. But the reason why I'm doing it Fuck you, man. Where's Gabby? Is she okay? <laughs> she's was she in the office today, George? No. Nope. She's been working from home. Tell her I love her. Long. Tell her hello. <laughs> okay. Tell her I miss her. I will. I'll let but her know. He, here's the thing. The reason why I'm on the Peloton every day and I'm lifting weights, I'm gonna get yoked and jacked, and I'm gonna look like a different Bobby Lee. There's two reasons. Number one, I'm in quarantine, and I and this is prison. It feels like prison, and I'm gonna have a prison prison body. <laughs> this is what prisoners do, right? And I'm doing it old school. I'm doing push-ups. I'm doing sit-ups like on yeah. a hard wooden floor. You know, I'm doing it old school. I'm tightening my butt cheeks like you would do in prison to exercise those muscles. Mm-hmm. But the second reason why is because there's a threat. There's a threat in the house. There's a, there's a real threat, and it's not in my mind. The oh. threat is North Korean soldiers. I'll t- I, my girlfriend. I need to hear this theory. Has, yeah, uh, I'm telling. My girlfriend has been obsessed with fucking K dramas, and there's a K drama <laughs> out there with uh, that involves a North Korean soldier, right? And she's been doing what my mom does with the BTS. She's been screenshotting this fucking man, right? <laughs> she's been saying in the bed like, "I want to go to Korea. Why? Because you want to fuck that guy? Because no, they have better no, Corona testing. She's, you're obsessed." W- Admit to me right now that you're obsessed with the guy. Admit to me right now. I think obsessed would be an Sexual understatement. Sexual desires. I have not stopped thinking about Captain Lee Jong Hyuk for two straight weeks. Like when I'm not watching it over and over again, Crash Landing on You. That's the name of the show. I miss him. I have to like. <laughs> I have to go to all these like fan Instagram mm. sites and like mm-hmm, screenshot mm-hmm. his picture. I'm just obsessed. I'm just, I, yeah, I don't know what's okay. wrong with me. So. I think, okay, this is where my weakness falls. 
During this quarantine, I've noticed a couple of things about myself. I'm not normally a very impressionable person when it comes to romantic comedies and things like that. I always think that, oh, that's very unrealistic. But mm. since I've been home a lot, it's like dredged up feelings in me that I didn't know that I've put away for so long. Like now I wake up like feeling things that I hadn't felt since I was 25, that feeling of like longing, that wanting deep romance and it's so fucking weird and it's really catching me off guard but i'm getting mm -hmm. my fill of it from watching these korean dramas and i cry and i feel again and i and i i don't know why i've cast those feelings aside for so long but because i want to be this like pragmatic person about love but i don't think that that's really who i am at my core like i am a romantic and i'm a softy and i i I want, I swoon. And I'm swooning again. I haven't swooned in so long. What's okay. wrong with me, you guys? That's, all right, so, you know, she wants to be swooned. No, no, I'm swooning. I don't want to be swooned. You know what swoon means? No. Swooning is saying like, oh, he's so dreamy. Right, she wants to be, well, she yeah. wants romanticisms, right? She mm -hmm. wants to, she wants those old feelings that she did as a young person. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, I remember those feelings as well. I think they're dead inside me. But I think that maybe there is a glimmer inside my heart that I can retrieve and let grow and water. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, that's why I want to work out and I want to become a new man. And I want to learn those things. I want to get buff and, and look sexy. You are sexy no, to no, me. No, are you crazy? No, no, no. I, 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 come on. No, I'm being real with you. Since yeah. no one else is in the room but Juliana and we'll make her re feel really <laughs> awkward right now. Yeah. I think you are the sexiest man I've ever been with. And I that's what that's why I find it hurts me that we've become so business like with each other because I do want to have those really cheesy romantic moments with you and I I think that we've we've we haven't watered that part of our grass of our field yes yes mm. i agree they call it the seven year itch for no reason what's a seven year itch, year itch. I, don't, I just thought it was a movie no they it's basically <laughs> in relation to we seven over over seven years but in the seven year period there it but you know what relationships can go up and down and sideways mm -hmm. but i know this fundamentally that I I I just I love Kalila so so fucking much. That I think she's just the greatest person I've ever met. She's my best friend. Um, I trust her up and down with every aspect of my life, and um, there are, I'm not as romantic as I should be, and I am not as um, I don't know. It's just. Uh, it's been a tough couple of months. Wait, I have I have a question mm. for you though. Were you ever a romantic guy? You know, uh, you know, I. Uh, What's that's your a, that, idea of it? That's that's. You know. uh, well, you know, I, I've uh, my my idea of romance has always been. Um, Wait, let's ask the guys first, and then you give your idea of romance. Gilbert, what's your idea of romance? Like, what would you if you're trying to. Um, um, like in well, the I'll first couple months where you met Cindy and you thought, you know, I want to do this for her and make her feel some type of way. What what, what are your moves? Well, I'll tell you what I did for Valentine's Day because I think we were also having our three-year itch and I had, had become business-like and busy. Uh, she left for out of town for about a week and a half to Europe. So it was during Valentine's Day. So leading Prague. up to Valentine's Day. For, uh, Prague, yeah. So I wrote her... Uh, a letter every day leading up to Valentine's Day, which I don't write because it takes me too long and I have horrible handwriting. So I wrote her a letter sing every single day. She would, I told her to open one every day and then leading up to a very long letter. Oh, you're going to make me cry. I'm actually tearing up. <laughs> Can you not tell? That's that's like K-drama shit. <laughs> Why the fuck did you say that story? Because I want you to write a <laughs> fucking you know dissertation. What the fuck are you, do you doing? Because you Lee will fucking write letters. When they became separated you and crash landing. You fucking backstabbing oh, bastard. <laughs> you son of a bitch, George. Or, you tell something. What about something. you, George? You tell something, but yeah, don't something. fuck me, man. Oh, I'm I'm good for you, Bobby. I think I 
like buy flowers every uh, every other time I go to the grocery store. Just a you fucking bitch face. <laughs> no, you uh, buy flowers every other day. That's aggressive. No, every other time I go to the grocery <laughs> store. So like, that, if you go to the grocery store once oh, a week. Oh fuck! Well, you know what? I got to be more mindful about it. No, but you know, this is I'm not. <laughs> what is your idea of romance, I'm Bobby? I'm gonna tell you. Wait. I have before we Here, get here's into this. What, here's what I'm gonna just say. Let me just where say where did we learn these traits is important. I don't think I'm not shitting on you. I'm just saying I I think that maybe your idea of it might be different from yours, might be different from mine. So it's like we have to manage our expectations I based it on from what we learn from. Same okay. Here. I learned it from movies and the only movies that I watch that are romantic are movies about Love loss. Avengers Endgame. No, no, about like Par- <laughs> Paris, Texas is probably the most romantic movie I've ever seen in my life. That's what I've always, as a in high school, I saw that movie, mm-hmm. and I always thought that that right there is love. What part of it? Um, it's basically was a man, a man who there's he can't have this woman, right? And he's still in love, but. It, she's she he has to let her go and she left and it's the best that she left and he's constantly throughout his life you know struggling with that idea you know what I mean <laughs> it's the, it's the idea of loss wait hang mm. on so you're gonna break up with me and that's what you find romantic you're no gonna... what I'm just saying is is that you're asking me where I learned it you know I learned it from that I learned it from dr Zhivago you know what I mean where at the end of the movie you know the man that he loves, he, he, I forget, I haven't seen the movie in 20 years, but, you know, he's with this woman, he's in love, and then they get separated because of war, right? They mm-hmm. can't see each other. And then as an old man, he sees her on a bus and she walks off the bus and he, he's walking behind her because he's so old, he can't yell out her name because he's so old. And as he touches her, he, he, he barely touches her and she goes around a corner and he dies. Right, so that's my idea of love. That's your idea of love, but that's not that's not a uh, necessarily like romance. Like what to movies romance would you suggest to Bobby? What but that's all comedy? I was. I was never exposed to Fifty First Dates or you know any of the movies you guys oh. watch. I'm trying to think or, or too. The, or is, the Notebook. I I don't and I I will never I've never fully subscribed in that idea of like oh you know like long walks on the beach or like yeah. rose flowers whatever. But my idea of romance is a little bit different too. Like it comes from tiny things that are never what you see on television. And like, I think that what we need to do is maybe like communicate. It, to me, it's, it's small little things that make me feel like that person was thinking about me and only me in that moment. Um, I don't. I but, the green. What, what the jade ring? You were high out of your mind. <laughs> yeah. What about that ring, though? Come on, Kalila. I, I need to show it one in, in the next episode. Maybe yeah. you could tell he was high out of his mind when he bought it. Oh, I was, was high out of my mind. I don't know. During, I don't know. It was during that time. Oh, okay. Yeah, he yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's why I couldn't tell you when I was telling the story about the ring the last time. I, I, I. It sounded like maybe I wasn't appreciative of it. And the reason that I couldn't fully appreciate it at that time, but I couldn't tell you guys, is because he was acting very erratic and mm. very suspicious, and I couldn't like connect the dots at that time. So when he out of nowhere says, "Here's a ring," it made me feel like, "Wait, like what are you trying to put a salve on?" Because like you know, our our it, it felt like he was just trying to put out a tiny fire. It wasn't really like. Here's a ring. Oh God, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But but it's a beautiful ring. And... It's a shit ring, and I was so high. I don't know the fuck. <laughs> it, it's like I don't know what it, it was expensive, but it was ugly. I don't know what the fuck was going on with my mind. But um, I was in a um, in a I was state. lost. Yeah. I was in a state yeah. of man mania. That was my first pandy. So my first pandy, <laughs> the, the reason I'm so chill about all of this is because I already had my pandy last year. For a, for four months, oof, my pandy was rough. That was a rough time. I mean, th- mm-hmm. I remember when, um, it, what was the roughest was, uh, um, you guys were all in the room. Dude, Re- no one, remember you guys were in the room? Have we talked about that? No, we have no. never talked about that. So oh we were, my this, is, this was crazy. 
So we were we did a podcast, a live show, a live, a live podcast. podcast, and afterwards she just looked at me, and you guys were both in the room, and she said, "I'm not in love with you anymore. I'm uh, I'm done." Yeah. Remember that? That I'm scared done. the sh- me and George were like looked at each other. And like, what I, are we my doing? heart just I my heart just dropped, and she left the yeah. room, and I just thought, "Oh, life is over. It's different. Something's changed. I yeah. fucked up. I'm a." piece of shit but I think you were too high to consider those things I, I mean that's the whole fucking ugh. it's you know the reason why I got sober as like, listen I was out for what three months getting yeah. smoking pot right mm-hmm. but the reasons why I got sober as quickly as I did right is um, the fact that there were three or four things that were was happening that to me felt like too great of a loss. You know, my relationship with Kalila was number one. You could tell that it was in the fringe mm-hmm. of yeah. of just, it was going to be, you know, and I, I couldn't, that was just too difficult for me to live through. And number two, I mean, those other ones were health and my state of mind. And then maybe my career was fourth or fifth on the list. But that one day when that, that was the big that was a Oof. huge wake up call for me because um, you guys were both in the room and we looked at each other and we, we all felt like, oh, it's over, you know. And I remember feeling like, like I never usually lie to myself in that way, but I could feel the lie reverberating in my whole body because I was lying when I said that I could I, I just wanted to shake you so badly because i thought that yeah i re- i remembered you saying that if i relapse or if i'm not in a good state leave me let me hit a bottom so i thought that i was aiding in that way where if i just lied through my teeth and tell and you know just be strong and said okay you know i'm not in love with you i don't know who you are anymore i'm packing and i'm leaving um i thought that maybe that would shake you but it kind of like, you know. Mm-hmm. I yeah. also, I mean, I also remember Gilbert's look at me, and there was like a there was a there was a sense of like he was give without you you didn't say anything, yeah. but you looked at me like um, with with shameful eyes, uh, sad eyes. But it who was sta- sad. But it was but, like what did who, you do? Kind of eyes. But who stayed there the whole night until you guys finished talking? <laughs> you did. I did. I know, and I, and you're the adhesive. You were an adhesive that night. You were, you know, you know what you are. You know Taco Bell. You're what the refried I? bean. <laughs> yeah, what keeps the, the the? No, what you know that what, what that double the, that to make the taco double decker, the, the, the double hard decker? shell. Yes. Then the refried bean, and then they put the soft over around it. What yeah. do they call that? The soft shell. Yeah, the soft shell one. You're that. You're the refried bean. I'll take that. I remember I told George. I could tell George looked so uncomfortable, so I told him you can go home. I'll wait here. Well, I had no idea what to did, do. Like I didn't, was, I didn't know I, what. Like what? What's the <laughs> best thing to do at this moment? And I had no. I had no. Yeah, like everybody was in different like head spaces. What were you? And thinking? I was just trying to. What were you thinking, literally? Like what? You, trying to think of, think of what's the best thing to do. But like you and Kalila were in such different head spaces. It was like which, which side do I like help with to like bring everybody together. Mm. And I had no idea. I was so like, we tell the fans it was after it was right after the final show in the uh, in the old apartment. Yeah, yeah. for context, That's when Ka- this happened, uh, Kalila found out, I, I or guess put all the pieces together, or Bobby admitted it literally right before they walked into the room. So if you were at the live show at the old house, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon wow, as Bobby, yeah. Bobby and Kalila, sma- uh, fa- I knew something was wrong with Kalila because she was not smiling for real. But Bobby but was. I you put know, a lot of glitter on my eyes to try to mask uh, my puffy eyes. So I put like a uh, the you know in Euphoria, Euphoria yeah. that that they put a lot of glitter. That's yeah. what I did because I was like, oh maybe it won't be so obvious because my eyes were so puffy. I had just cried for like and a whole hour before, right before that. Yeah, yeah that was, nuts. um, that was, uh, it was a wow. good show. Great show though. Great candy. It was, great, it was a great candy. <laughs> I don't know but, how um, the fuck you did that knowing all this, both but of let's, you. But let's, that was a great show, huh? Yeah, that was, that was a good, a show, good but, show. Yeah. Well, I'm a professional and, um, <laughs> say i'm a professional you, you as well that was really good Kalila. that was yeah, yeah. impressive 
But let's the, do yeah, an update. The, the photos though. with you know, everybody over, afterwards, just what? knowing like afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay, George. <laughs> <laughs> Timing. Timing's, the timing's great. Um, some things. That felt even uh, online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just that 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 hit hard, huh? So, uh, uh. but update. <laughs> the update is, I have what over a hundred and ten days. Or uh, I think so. Yeah, I um. And truth be told, um, we were joking earlier. I honestly believe that you know, without Kalila, I would have the fucking disease because. I'm so, um, I have that mentality that a lot of people have, like, almost untouchable, or I'm also a risk taker unnecessarily, like, I'd be like, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna go out, fuck the rules, mm -hmm. fuck, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, and for me, because I have two people in the <clears throat> house, um, and also because I get educated by Kalila about exactly what this, why, you know, Will will coronavirus kill me? Maybe not. It could. Um, it's killed a lot of young people, but um, it's you know I don't want to spread it to other people, and um, yeah. I know that other people are susceptible, um, especially older people or people with pre-existing ailments that if they get it, that they would die. And I want to be a mindful, concerned citizen. And so, in many ways. I think that I would have gotten it. I Kalila has been um, educated, educating me on it, and also um, this is uh, also something that I don't think this country has gone through in many, 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 many years. Yeah, I don't know what the last disease of this magnitude was. What was it? The SARS or Ebola? Um, I think it's smallpox. This... In the U.S., was it the Spanish flu? Oh, Spanish maybe the Spanish flu. It was 1918 that's similar to like a respiratory illness. It would be this. I mean, there have been a lot of things that we've, you know, since, you know, um, have vaccines for. Like polio was a very, very big issue when it happened. Like if we didn't have a polio vaccine, we couldn't willy nilly eat oysters the way we do. Yeah. And I grew up in a country that was very, very like strict and hard by polio. So growing up, like, for instance, my swim coach, my first swim coach, Coach Lando, they used to call him Kim Pang, mm. <laughs> um, which was um, because he he had um, he got polio when he was young and then his one leg was smaller. So he had a limp. He had a really bad limp. Um, Juliana's um, nanny at home, um, she has a uh, an arm, one arm smaller than the other, right, um, from polio. So you just saw it a lot in my country. So mm. like. When I come to the United States and there is this perception of invincibility over here because they've just never seen that around them. If they've I never had, seen cholera. They've never seen polio. They've never seen things that like I saw in third world countries that we take for granted here. That's why when like you're not going to find a movement of anti-vaxxers in the Philippines. You just mm. aren't. Anti-vaxxers have to have a certain level of privilege to be able to speak or assert the things that they do because they've never really seen it. And when measles comes back over here, they're going to bring it to a country like the Philippines who can't afford to have something like that. Like, so that's what, like, enrages me about this, like, idea of inv invincibility here. It is it is a privilege to not know about polio or ever having seen it in your lifetime, you know? Mm. Mm. I was gonna throw in a joke, but I think it was wrong. The timing, <laughs> the timing is wrong. The See timing George? is wrong. See George. I'll just throw it out it. there. I'll just throw I out my joke, and then the you, joke. you could cut it out, right? But the joke yeah. is, if I had a little polio arm, you I know knew what it was I would do? I knew it was about you, the arm. You know what I would do? <laughs> what? I would get a tattoo of a bigger arm on it. So <laughs> what? How can you tattoo a bigger arm? You're not like you're, you're not a 3D printer. <laughs> I would just like do an optical illusion. I don't know. Or if you hold it the right way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, the it. timing was wrong on that joke, but um, it's not even that great. But um, I threw it out there. Uh, Wait, can we talk about my K dramas a little bit more though? Go ahead. Okay, I'm Please I'm do. I'm pleading to all you Tiger Belly listeners. I need somebody and a bunch of somebodies to help me process. Um, the show crash landing on you. Now, I don't expect a lot of you men to really fall hard or understand um, oh. why um, the show has impacted my life in in different ways. But I just need, if you're a girl <clears throat> and you, you, you're you into Korean dramas, 
please come speak to me. Um, I want to squeal with somebody. Because fucking Juliana is not watching it either. Wow, Juliana. I, I thought you, oh, started, yeah, I thought you, started, you she started, started watching she it. She started. She has a long way to go. Yeah. So um, I'm just pleading with you guys to just... And maybe tell me, watch it, and then come back to me and say, hey, like... Maybe Kalala, you're you're losing your mind a little bit, and you need. There he is. There's a guy. I'm gonna look like him in about three months. <laughs> I'm gonna look just like that guy. It's That's not sh- that I find him necessarily attractive. It's his character. I'm not in love with Hyun Bin. I'm in love with Captain Lee Jong Hyuk. Yeah. Am I saying that right? I think so. <laughs> God, I would love to see Bobby in that jacket. Have you been, <laughs> Gilbert? What do you you have been? What have you been doing to to kill time? Well, the main thing is I I'm heard a- that you know what I heard. What? I heard you've been going out a lot and getting Shh. food. I've been getting food. I've been doing, still dropping it off to there's this homeless shelter down the street that I. Oh, really? I you get food for the homeless shelter, not for yourself? No, for myself, too. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's Mo- the same mainly one for I, yourself? It's, it's the same one I drop off every. It's not a, anything special. It's not anything special. So every meal, how, how many times a day do you go out to get takeout? <sighs> Once a week. Be honest. Deliver- do you, have you not seen my Instagram? No, I don't follow you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been cooking a lot, as you can see all behind right. me. All those cookbooks right there. So, but what when you go out? What's open? I mean, I don't. I haven't been out there. So, what's open? Uh, well, right now I'm supporting this Filipino restaurant that they're struggling in Tatang? North Hollywood. Tatang, yeah, yeah. So I love Tatang. I've been. What, why are they struggling? Oh, because uh, of the, it's a small business, babe. A lot it is, of yeah. Small yeah they, they're not backed by a restaurant group, so they're just. It's just you know people also don't want to go out and eat. So I've been trying to like buy food and had that people deliver it to other people's houses, mm. or my mom just bought like randomly like five hundred dollars worth of food there just to mm. send to people because it's yeah. like it's kind of sad how they just so many of these small like even Mexican restaurants are just kind of just they can't do anything, they're just not operating. Yeah, and it's such a it's it's also just a really you have to like weigh it out too, you know, because it's like. You want to help the small businesses like stay alive, but at the same time, it's like you want to minimize the risk of any type of like cross contact because the longer this goes, the worse it is for them. So mm-hmm. it's like, do we all just take our losses, swallow this really, really tough pill and just say, fuck it, let's all just shut down for a month. It'll be really hard a month from now, but it'll be harder if this plays out for six more months. Yeah. Yeah, they're saying now a couple more months, I think. Yeah. A couple more months. So, Real, um, realistically, But I understand yeah. what you're doing, Gil, and I think that like that's kind of where my head is too, where it's like, you know, I I I I try my best to give my to give money to where I can in my own small way, but Yeah, it's t- it just depends. I just think there's a lot of people that aren't being smart. Like I've only seen the, other than like the delivery people or like say if I go to like uh, a grocery store, I've always seen the same rotation of like three people. It's my roommate and Cindy, basically. But there's, I know people that are like still finishing student films. It's like, what are you doing? What? No, that's the shit I see. That's what I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, what, what yeah. are you doing right now? Like, why are you doing that? Yeah. It's crazy, man. Uh, yeah, a lot. I think that was like reading this article that there's like three types. There's the, the, the panic buyers. The ones who just think this this is it, this is the apocalypse. I'm, no. uh, you know, to each man. How do you say it? How do you say it? Each man for his own. Each, each man for his own. Oh, <laughs> just each man. <laughs> <laughs> We're missing a few words. What's it? There, right? What's it called? <laughs> each man. <laughs> <laughs> each man for his own. Is that how you say it, George? Yep. Yep. Every I man think. for himself. Every man for himself. for himself. Oh my God! There you go. Yeah. I like every each man. man for himself. I say each man. <laughs> each man. <laughs> So yeah, there's every man for himself, the panic buyers, the hoarders, there's that. And then there's what they call the pandemic Goldilocks, where the people are more rational, where they're like, you know, listening, following the rules, hunkering down, the pandemic Goldilocks. And then there's the underreactors. And those are the ones that are still finishing student films, who are just really against the idea of lockdown altogether. I think I'm one and three, but because I have Kalila, <laughs> I'm only um, one now. One and a half. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick break to share this amazing sponsor with you. Liquid IV, liquid IV, <laughs> liquid <laughs> IV for your for your for your body. Liquid IV. You guys, liquid IV is something that I use on a daily basis, especially in quarantine, because um, I need my um, 
What are you doing? I need my electrolytes and I also need my um sleep remedies, man. I use this liquid IV sleep nighttime drink mix. Literally, you drink this, it's it's it it, it puts me to sleep. Mm. Right? And there's no chemicals, it's not nasty shit. Right? Yeah. What um and what makes liquid IV so effective? Well, the optimal rate, it has the optimal ratio, not the sleepy one, but the actual liquid IV. Mm -hmm. um, it has the optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium that delivers water and nutrients into the bloodstream. It's the perfect balance to help you hydrate quickly and more effectively than water alone. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water can give you as much hydration as two to three bottles of just plain water. Yeah, and it's yeah, so easy to pour, the taste is great. Mm -hmm. um, there's no GMO. It's vegan, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. Clean yeah. ingredients, guys. Yeah. Get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code BELLY at checkout. That's 25% off anything when you order on Liquid IV's website. Just go to liquidiv.com and enter the promo code BELLY to save 25% and get better hydration. That's liquidiv.com, promo code BELLY. Don't wait. Start prop uh, properly hydrating today. Enjoy the rest of the show. I'm one and a half. So. <laughs> Wait, because here's the thing. I, I, I got a text today saying um, from the comedy store saying that next week, I guess Bill Burr, maybe Rogan, D'Elia, Whitney Cummings, Tom Segura, they're doing a podcast marathon at the main room at the oh, comedy cool. store, a benefit for employees of the store. And they were they invited me to do it. And, um, you know, obviously, mm. I'll be honest with you, and I told Kalila this, that I'm not going to go, you mm -hmm. know, but I have to be honest, there is a part of me that really, when I got the call, was excited because, you know, obviously, I want to see my friends. And obviously, I also mm. love performing, and I love being at the store, and I love being a part of um, the comedy community. It's a it's a great community. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I, I, I struggle with that shit still. It's like, you know, because they're saying, you know, we're going to, you know, all we're only going to do three comics at a time and then we're going to separate them by seven or eight feet and no one's going to touch anybody, no audience, yeah. right? So in my head, I'm like, how is that going to hurt, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, if they're being mindful about it and being cautious, but I think why risk it as well, you know? So um wait but then don't is this this is to benefit uh the people out of work from the comedy store? Yeah, and other things. I don't know exactly what the donations are. I think it's mainly for employees and waitresses and stuff. And I know your argument, uh, Kalala's argument is um well we we all have some you know, we all have money, right? Why don't we just pool our money together? Into like this giant But, but it's not fund. it's but it's you know, and obviously it's about performing as well. People like you know, we're all cooped yeah, up, it. and we want to be able to, yeah. you know, do something to get. It's an expression, right? We want to express ourselves, but um, you know, I think that I, I'm probably not going to do it. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, and I think that um, while I understand that need to express, um, everybody at this time is sacrificing a, a a part of their lives whether you're a you know you're a film student whether you're a podcaster whether you're a, a runner a grocery runner whether you're an, everyone but right now our main responsibility is to not fuck the people who are actually fighting this thing right yeah. that's our main responsibility that's why i'm kind of just like look dude if i have to sit on my ass and lose my mind for a couple months that's the that's that's a a small price to pay for making sure that I don't fuck the others in the front line. So c can I ask you, sweetie? Because um, because remember, everyone in my family is a frontliner. So I'm very I know they are, and, and, and it. yeah, and um, Kalila, we, we she has. I haven't seen my brother Steve at all, and my brother's called me and goes, "Hey, we can't hang out." I go, "No." Um, when when Kalila's sister comes over, to, we exchange things. They don't come in the house. We look. We talk to them when we're on the balcony, and they're on the driveway, and um, it's really sad. But we're we're doing our part in in terms of that. But I want to ask Kalila. So, is there no circumstances where we can get any kind of delivery? What like, kind of delivery? Like from Terry's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's my argument: is that if we continue to use Instacart or to get a food runner. 
I still feel really terrible that I am putting those people at risk. Those people at risk, you know, they're not well taken care of for starters. Like Instacart or Whole Foods, they're not taking care of their employees. Their healths are at risk. They still have to go home to families. So my thing is like I want to minimize having someone even though they I know it 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 keeps them afloat. Yeah, they want to make not There are people out I know but there are people out there yeah. that want to make money. I, I understand and all they, of and that. And they want to and they they need food. They want to run the food. But there that money won't make any sense if there is no life to live in 6 months. Is that I, that's, I, no, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm so, saying. I, so you're that basically say you're saying no. No I'm Terry's. Saying, <laughs> no, and I right now like <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just one. I have <laughs> <laughs> just one bean cheese and rice burrito. I mean, I just don't have a trust in a lot of things right now. Nachos. And... Remember nachos? <laughs> Remember nachos? God, I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You seem to think you're the only one that wants those things. I know. I'm just. Can I just? I. I mean, I'm just bringing up for humor. Can I yeah. tell We're not you do it, one but, thing that I? But I bet your money though, Terry. I'm bummed about. They're probably there right now, going, "Hey, how come?" No one calling us. We want to make nachos, you know, but, you know. Can I, can I show something really sad? I had yeah. a, a DoorDash person come, and uh, they had the no contact delivery, you know, that whole thing where you have to, they have to leave the food, and they have to walk away, and then you can open the door. She, this woman was walking with her little daughter, and it made me so sad because you're like, she wouldn't take her kid out there if she didn't have to, but it was like, oh, she just is, all she's thinking about is money, clearly, which is sad. Yeah, I know, and that's, and that's the top. That's saying. Yeah. Because even though you're like, can you not take your kid outside? But it's like, I'm, I don't know her situation, but it's like. But that probably. I'm not, in my own life at least, yeah. in, in the things that I can t- control, whether it's my, you know, it, whether it's our gardener or somebody who works for us, even if it's like a dog sitter. Yeah, we yeah. give them money and say, hey, t- it is just, even if they haven't done any service, I don't want yeah. them to do any service. Like whatever I can do to give money to those people and say, hey, stay home. And even that's like that Instacart lady or that runner. If I had seen her, I would have said, okay, here's a certain yeah. amount of money if you can, if that helps you not have to do as many runs. You know, and I think that people with money should step up in that way. And yeah. and I don't understand, like truly, like we are around a lot of rich people, man. Like you guys are, we live in LA. Like we can do our part in that way. When I, okay, so I've had, Two deliveries from 7-Eleven because I need Diet Coke so bad, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And obviously, we're you know we we wear the mask, we, we 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 it gets dropped off, we wipe it down, and all that stuff. But you know, I I always leave like a huge, you know, tip. So can we do this with Terry's? Just hear me out, right? We order from <laughs> Terry's, but we don't actually we don't actually get it delivered. We'll just order it and tell the person in the message. You know, we don't actually. You can eat the food. Yeah, I, I think just the idea of ordering Terry's will make me feel better. Without oh, eating the food, I, oh, you know, I could just imagine in my mind that it's coming. He, 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 and it, I, I don't it think is. that you're Here's able to. You order Terry's, right? You're not yeah. nachos, and then Kalila, you make the food, leave it outside the door, so he feels like he's getting delivery. So everyone mm, wins. I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, could, I don't I know why, but I just crave nachos why right now. Why nachos? That's such a. I, I, I'll tell you what I crave. Can I just say do this? Mine's Korean barbecue. Like, I miss a restaurant. Oh, shit. Why'd you say that? I'm oh, sorry. Oh, you, oh it, fuck. You I jerk. I can Korean barbecue. Oh, no, I want nachos it. and all the Korean barbecue. Yeah, yeah. I want agahashi. Yeah. Oh, Gopchang. shit, dog. Fuck. I yeah. want, um, I want, um, me- some sort of Mexican, right? <laughs> I, I'll tell you now, I, 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 I crave East Coast food. The Josie? Like, like Jersey Mike's. Yeah, Jersey's ah. having a hard time right now. I know. <laughs> so Jersey Mike's, I crave it. I crave a little bit. of You know what else I crave? Um, Panda Express for some reason. Mm. You know? Um, I miss Asian food. Yeah. Like I miss yeah. like Newport seafood. Woohoo. I'll tell you what I've been playing though. Can we talk about what I've been doing with my days? Oh yeah, I'm a gamer now apparently. Yeah. What, are you, what are you playing? <laughs> I'm playing the widest game ever. Uh, Warzone, Call of Duty. Is it good? It's fun. When you're playing with people, you're talking, you're laughing. It's fun. I get the whole uh, Destiny thing now. I get it. You do. I get it. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. But 
uh, all, because I don't want to do that because I don't want to scream and I want to get all stressed out. Yeah. So and what do you think I've been so so what what I do is I I go all right I'm gonna go down for an hour but I spend six hours right and I never see him and you never see so what really? do you think I've been playing down there babe? I think that you Fallout? have gone initially no 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 there's this uh, it's not it's not Skyrim it's the other one. Witcher? That, that, the, Witcher, not Witcher. It's the other one that was supposed to be the best game ever. Um, the Last of Us? Oh, Horizon? Maybe it is Witcher. Oh, Horizon. It's The Witcher. Oh, no, Witcher, I have yeah. I, I downloaded Witcher and all these other games, but what I've been doing for two weeks <laughs> yeah. is I've been playing on my PlayStation, uh-huh. Stardew Valley. Oh. Don't you already play that on Nintendo I play it on Switch? my Switch, and I go downstairs, and I play it. <laughs> Wow, I'm obsessed I'm with it. Proud of you for that. Why? Because I, it's, I I don't know what it is. It's it's the repetition of it that makes kept, keeps my mind. It's the grinding mm-hmm. and the repetition that keeps my mind. You know what I mean? Sane. I, it's weird. I don't know. I got. I, I might have to go. I have therapy tomorrow. By the way, I've been doing these um, Zoom AA meetings. They've been great, and awesome. I've been doing Zoom um, therapy, and it's been great. Thank God for technology, folks. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I just want to. I just want to bring an... out. We haven't even talked about Tiger King. Oh shit! I just watched that oh, last yeah, yeah. night. What episode? All of them. You, you watched all of them? them? I did all of it. I, oh, I slept at four a.m. We, we we only did how many do we do? We have one more. To we go. have only one more left. Which uh, I'm yeah. not really honest. My honest opinion is is that I'm really not. I don't really care because yeah, uh, I already know. Number one, I already know right that Joe Exotic's in jail. Yeah. And number two, I know that now Carol is free. Knows. Yeah. I know How Car- do you know that? Because I've I, before we even started, I, f- I was following Big Cat Tiger Rescue. Oh, you were? Yeah. Oh. So she, she, she's con- like every time someone comments, she's the one that's like commenting back. She comments back on, on everyone's yeah. comments. So I know that she's free. So to me, it's like I, I, I don't. I, I already saw the juice of it. I'm just gonna what? throw something wild out there and. Yeah. Um, um, take it as you will. No, don't, if you, if you say what you fucking said. No, no, no. So wait, if you say, wait, if you say what you fucking said the other day, it's gonna put me in a rage. No, it's not what I was gonna say. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> now I want to go. What I was gonna say, I'll, I'll say that after I say. What I was gonna say. <laughs> um. So, I'm. So you know how like everyone uh, they're gonna make uh, Tiger King uh, a movie or whatever, and guys like Dak Shepard or um, Ed Norton are like vying to play um, Joe Exotic. I think that we should just throw everyone a curveball and cast an Asian man as Joe Exotic, <laughs> and I think there's no better person to play that than Joe than Bob Exotic himself. You say Joe Coy? Bobby Lee. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Here's my exp- here's my argument for this. I think that the person who plays Joe Exotic cannot act as Joe Exotic, but they have to embody the essence of Joe Exotic. Mm. And I think that Bobby is cut from the same cloth. I think that Bobby Lee is one meth hit away from being Joe Exotic. I think that Joe Exotic is Bobby Lee on methamphetamines. If he were a meth addict, that's exactly who he'd be. It, it's fucking crazy. It's the, they're the same it, it person. Make sense. And I said to her, I go, who else as a comic is one meth away? She can only think of Andy Dick. <laughs> so so you're Andy Dick. Yeah, so basically, what she's saying is, is that I'm the same as Andy Dick, cut from the same cloth, and that I, I number one, I don't own fucking lions, lady. Right? Number two. I don't. I'm not gay. Could you say that? You, oh wait, hold on. But she, she also said I'm one meth hit away from being gay. I I'm said, not gay. I th- I think that he's one meth hit away from having two husbands uh, like Joe Exotic. No, that's not true. You but have if I a were Travis. To- you, babe, come on, come on. You you have you have on this podcast and in several other podcasts admitted that when you did meth, you only exclusively suck dick. When I was a kid, because I couldn't get pussy. <laughs> Duh. I couldn't get pussy back then. So when I was when I was 14, 13, 14 years old, yeah. I would do math and drink and smoke marijuana, and I sucked a, a couple of dicks occasionally. But that's because I couldn't get any pussy. I tried. Yeah. Right. But when you're on math and you can't get no pussy, dicks the next the best option. Well, there's asshole and then dick. 
I'm yeah, sure there's a fucking cocaine you skipped cave asshole. in that room. <laughs> I apologize. Sorry, right. Jules. Another sorry, parallel. Sorry, sorry. Oh, see, those, that's you yeah. and your husband's. Another parallel was, what's a tattoo that Joe Exotic has on his arm? And who does he love most in the world? His brother, because his brother died. Mm. What do you have yeah. on your arm? My brother, Steve. That da- <laughs> oh, my God, Kalila. <laughs> Look, I have lived with him long uh-huh. enough to know the core of the man. And I know what his propensities are if he were to get back on meth. Mm. I just know that it would look like someone. He's an exhibitionist. He's someone. Joe Exotic is someone who loved to be seen, always wanted an audience, right? Mm -hmm. There are parallels there is all I'm saying. Hey, I'm trying to get you a fucking movie. I think that we should petition to have Bobby play him. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Dude, Travis was hot. Travis okay. was hot. Yeah. So Bobby, yeah. Bobby, say you were Joe Exotic in the film. Who would? What other comics would you cast as your husbands for like the best chemistry? Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> oh, now you're oh, that, uh, so not Eric Griffin. No, oh, yeah. Eric, no, Eric Balfour <laughs> as Travis. Yeah, tr- Eric Balfour would be Travis, right? Mm. And then this little guy right here would probably be Br- Brenton Biddlecombe. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? With that, that teeth, you know, Brenton yeah, Bilico. Yeah, yeah. Um, the woman, Carol, oh, would man. probably be pra- be pr- played by, um, I'd, ha- I'd make her gain the weight, uh-huh. but um, I would make Nikki Glaser gain 100 pounds. <laughs> 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 right? I, I like Nikki Glaser as that. And then um, to what play about- um, Bhagavan, what's his name? Bhagavan. Bhagavan. Doc Antle. Doc Antle. Yeah. With the elephant. It w- I would probably put in... Um, that's a tough one, huh? Yeah, it's a tough one. Bill Burr? No. Bill Burr? Burt Kreischer? Maybe Burt, yeah. Burt Kreischer. Oh, Burt, Burt Kreischer. Kreischer, yeah. Right, and then as... Um, who else who's the, the weird... Character? Who's, the ch- who's the Chucky doll guy? What's his name? The Chunky what? The Chucky doll? With the big dude with the bangs? Oh, Fortune Feimster. Wait, who is that guy? The club owner? Yeah, the club, yeah. The, the strip the, the club strip owner. Club owner? Yeah, yeah. Garrett. That would be played by it? Fortune Feimster. <laughs> That's, so, <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Fortune Feimster. And then who else is in it? Um, oh, oh the the documentary guy. The Phil, the producer. The, the producer oh, that was oh, a, yeah. the reality show guy. Yeah. Oh, who God, that guy was him? crazy. It would have to be someone older like... Um, Court McCowan or no, Court's mm-hmm. way too pretty for that. Yeah, I don't know. Robin who. Williams, Rick Ingram, Rick Ingram, Rick yes. Ingram. Yeah, yes. Anyway, do we have an unhelpful advice? We do have an unhelpful advice. Go ahead, let's do it. Unhelpful advice with Bobby and Kalila. Okay, this one is from a female listener. Hi, Tiger Belly crew, long-time listener. Here's my situation. Me and my boyfriend have been dating for about a year and a half. We have no no major problems or fights in our relationship, and it's been very normal and smooth sailing, but we have a 20-year age difference. Uh, no issues come out of our age difference, and we've never seemed to think about it. I just found out he's never lied with a significant other before. Is this a red he's flag? He's never what? He's never lied with a significant other before. Lied, lied? or lied. lay down? Never. Oh, sorry, sorry lived. Oh, he's never lived with. <laughs> you said, wait, wait let's back up. <laughs> I right, just found out he read, never lived with Alexis. No, you read lived as lived? <laughs> I'll be honest. There's a bunch of Tiger King photos on my computer and I got distracted. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you? Are you? Oh my God, that's so good. I, I just found out he has never lived with a significant other before. <laughs> Oh my God! Is this Gabby, a red? Where are you? Is this, stop? Is this a red flag? <laughs> I would like to be married one day, not anytime soon. But I want to know: is this a possibility for us in the future? How do I bring this up with him without pressuring him or giving him an ultimatum? Well, I'm going to assume that the guy is 20 years older. Uh, she's 24, and he's 44, and he's never lived lived with anybody. Um, oh, man, come on, <laughs> you come on. Um, he's never lived with anybody. That to me is a red flag. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes and no, and I'll tell you why. So when I first met Bobby, while he had had brief stints of like, you know, co-living with somebody, Mm -hmm. he never really truly lived with a woman. Yes, Sarah Hyland lived with me for two years. It wasn't two years, babe. A year and a half. 
but she would disappear. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, well, from what you were, ooh, I love her. So, what's her name? The yeah, lady got her arm ripped off. Yeah, who would she, play her in the arm? I didn't movie? know she was Me. transgender. Yeah. Wait, she is. I just opened the article and it said something about uh, she's been misgendered on the show. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I. I think that 44 is still young. I think that, you know, this pressure to have done all these things by the time, like, you don't like it when you're like, oh, I personally don't like it when people ask me, why don't you have a kid? Why aren't you married? Why do you do all this? I don't. I think the same, the same should apply to men. I don't think mm. that we should consider a 44-year-old man who doesn't have kids and who doesn't, who's never lived with anyone like a red flag. Like, I don't, it, to me, that's like a double standard if we're doing that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that you're right. Yeah. So I don't know. But um, God I, uh, bless you, lady. You're lucky. You're lucky that he's like untainted. You're yeah. lucky that. May you stay healthy and li- living. Plus a year and a half and you're not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fucking what do you uh, think, babe? Retard. Do you think it is a red flag? I don't know. I mean, nah. it's like 44. Never lived with anybody is to me. No, a little, lived with a woman. Lived with. I mean, of course, roommates. Yeah, but lived with a woman. I think that is a little bit of the 44 is old. I would do this. I would see how he is. Like, you know, you get more serious and you stay, you know, four or five days in his home. Like, what's he like? Does he increasingly yeah. get like agitated on by like the fifth day? Is he somebody who isn't able to compromise? Is he like a super neat freak and it annoys you? Like, there are certain people that I love a lot that I could never live with. Like, truly, truly. Like, I love them as human beings, but just the way either they're too anal or or just too inconsiderate of like roommates and stuff like maybe you might want to you know like observe closely and see how he is when you stay for longer periods of time and in his home yep (laughs) yes sir there you go listen guys i haven't eaten all day so i'm gonna have to get something to eat but um i thought that was a very pretty good um uh, tiger belly i think we should do this every week i think that we should uh, make a promise though what I think that we should try and stay away from a uh, talk of th- the C word. No, we will. The, it, we just had to do it this episode because mm-hmm. we hadn't been together because we had backlogged a couple. And so, you know, yeah. we had to address it and we addressed yeah. it on this one. Next time we'll talk about other things. Because we should be a mental health podcast. We are going to be a mental health podcast. And but I think that everyone is like, just it's just like, over. I know, but also over. people also want to, you know, hear about because they're, coping with whatever they're coping with so sure. it's like i think it's good to address it a little bit but it won't always be about that but i want to um do a little prayer dear Ty- dear lord dear lord please um take care of our tiger belly listeners and mm-hmm. um let them be healthy and living and um <laughs> you know have them enjoy it okay um Amen. Amen. And I want to um, say, um, honestly, guys, be safe out there. And um, my thoughts are with everyone. And uh, we're going to get through this as a country and as a society. Mm-hmm. And um, we're, I'm very blessed to be healthy and alive. And I'm b- very blessed to have the situation that I'm in right now. And I, I hope you guys are blessed as well. And um, I love you. And take care. Good night. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed our... Uh quarantine episode uh george is george where are you actually no one we never brought i am at home in echo park what is that behind you um it's a little design (laughs) bryce tried i think bryce can give us more information on this but uh it's a it's a mountain scene if you uh oh bryce reveal yourself show us where you are bryce no bryce show, show the off show people what behind the scenes of the hustle and bustle looks like boom guys studio Yep. Studio. Uh, look at all that. We're stuff. not gonna give a good have good audio on him, but whatever. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh I'm in my home right now as well. Uh anyways, guys, we'd like to thank our sponsors for sticking with us and helping you. If you want to start hydrating today, go to liquidiv.com, promo code belly. And remember, folks, baldness and ED can be optional. Try hymns today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to forhims.com slash tiger belly. And I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of times on your hands these days. So if you want to get your questions on Tiger Belly, email us at, email us at adviceunhelpful at gmail.com. We're looking for interesting, unusual, non-typical problems, and we need your help 
as much as you want ours. That's advice and helpful at gmail.com. And George, who was the winner for last week's meme contest with Sasha Gray? Instagram user Reality Blender Live. At Reality Blender Live, he's got, uh, he did a great mashup of me and the, uh, John Na Na, but uh, Bobby the, with the, the, hey, let's just show it to you guys. Let's yeah. not have me. Yeah, let's not try to explain <laughs> something when we yeah, have yeah. an image. <laughs> uh, so, uh, if you're on audio, just you can go and uh, find that on Instagram, I'm sure. If you're on audio um, and you have not yet subscribed to the YouTube, I mean, you're making George sad. Subscribe to the no, YouTube. No, no, I'm guy. fine. I'm fine. I mean, do whatever unsus- you want. Fine, unsubscribe. Everyone, unsubscribe. I'm happy with everything. <laughs> man, I'm uh, so happy uh, nobody asked me about what my day to day is because I think I'm one of the every man for himselfers, you know? No, you're not. You're too kind. <laughs> you, if you, Gilbert, you know, you're going there like. <laughs> Make it putting everybody else to shame. All I do is worry about my own health. Make sure I'm. Hey, it's not that I'm hard to, to run into a homeless person in uh, North Hollywood. It's pretty cray cray in my area. Wake uh, up, do Vim Hof breathing, take a cold shower, maybe a little it. yoga. Try to keep my uh, keep myself healthy. That's it. And keep your melatonin like the way it looks. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, you can follow everything Kalila at Calamity K, everything on Tiger Belly at Tiger Belly uh, on Instagram and at the Tiger Belly on Twitter, everything Bobby Lee at Bobby Lee Live. Uh, and once again, I, I think I skipped over it. Uh, if you want the person that won the meme contest, uh, George said his name, you can look it up. He wins Reality gift, Blender Live. A re- yeah. a Reality Blender Live. You get a gift basket from us. Uh, has all sorts of stuff. So make sure you submit every week and make a meme based on the episode. So whatever you want to do, be creative and uh, hashtag it Tiger Belly on uh, Twitter or Instagram. We'll pick a winner from there. Also, uh, you can follow George at George underscore Kimmel. And myself at Gilbert's. So everyone, have a good day. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.